I've combined and summarized the content from my issues and debates videos into this issues and debates revision video. If you don't understand any of the content I cover here, go to my long videos for a full explanation. But if you just need a reminder of the key points quickly, this is the video for you. But don't just use this video. I've got a Psychboost app and it's designed to test your knowledge of all the topics in A-level psychology actively using flashcards. It's on iOS and Android and you can use it for all of Paper 1 for free. If instead you want tutorial support videos with questions from all three papers, you can access over 16 hours of these as well as hundreds of printable resources over on my Patreon. But enough of that, let's get started. Gender and Culture Bias in Psychology Bias when a psychologist's pre-existing beliefs and viewpoints influence their theories and data interpretation. Bias comes from personal experiences, cultural background, education, political beliefs, and gender-related experiences. Universality is the claim observed behaviours apply to all humans, regardless of differences in gender, biology, or culture. If a hypothesis is not tested on a diverse sample, this claim is an assumption, and may not be generalizable. Gender bias in research happens when researchers' stereotypical views about male and female behaviour affect their theoretical assumptions. This leads to misrepresentations of actual male and female behaviour. Alpha bias is the assumption that there are significant differences in behaviour between genders, often leading to an overemphasis or exaggeration of these differences between males and females. Bowie's monotrophic theory. Beta bias is the assumption there are no significant differences in the behaviour of males and females often leading to an underestimating or minimizing actual behavioral differences. Ashton Milgram's research. Androcentrism. Psychologists and theories that tend to reflect and support a male-centric view of the world. This bias is due to the fact most psychologists who developed these theories were male. Cultural bias refers to interpreting and judging human behavior based on cultural norms and experiences. Ethnocentrism is when researchers consider their own culture or ethnic group to be superior, or the norm, and use it as a standard for evaluating other cultures. Ainsworth's strain situation. Cultural relativism in psychology is the principle that human behaviour should be understood within the context of the culture where it occurs, taking into account that culture's norms, values and beliefs. Dealing with bias. Henrik, 2010. Found findings are argued to be universal, but are culture biased, as they're conducted on weird participants. Western, educated, industrialised, rich and democratic. 68% of research subjects in a sample of hundreds of studies in the leading psychology journals came from the United States, and 96% were from Western industrialized nations. To reduce the weird bias in psychology, it's important to use diverse samples or replications across multiple cultures. Van Eijendor. Bias within psychology can be reduced through greater diversity and equal representation among researchers. This includes encouraging more female researchers to reduce androcentrism and to limit ethnocentrism Indigenous psychology should be encouraged. Research that's conducted by individuals who are native to, or deeply understand their culture under investigation. Bias within psychology can be reduced through a reflexive approach, which involves researchers actively reflecting on their beliefs, values and experiences. Self-awareness helps the researcher recognise how these personal factors might influence the research process. For example, helping to identify stereotypes that could affect the interpretation of participant behaviour. Bias in reporting psychological findings can be reduced by clearly stating that the theories, findings and conclusions are limited to the gender or culture represented in the sample, and any claims of universality or difference should be supported by empirical data. Free will and determinism. As a science, psychology relies on deterministic cause and effect relationships to explain phenomena and make precise predictions. These causal explanations are validated using the scientific method, which involves formulating and testing hypotheses under control conditions. Hard determinism. Behavior is set by forces outside of our control, internal or external, with no role for free will. Soft determinism. Traits and behaviors are, to an extent, dictated by internal and external forces. However, we do have some level of control, free will, over our behavior through conscious four processes, cognitive psychology. Free will. Individuals consciously decide their behavior without deterministic constraints, humanistic psychology. Biological determinism. Behavior is set by our genetics, including the role of evolution, and biological processes such as hormone and neurotransmitter levels, and the functioning of brain structures. Biological psychology. Environmental determinism. Our experiences in the world shape our behavior. We've learned to behave in certain ways based on factors like reinforcement and growing up in a certain culture. Behaviorism and social learning theory. Psychic determinism. Innate drives shaped by child's experience form unconscious forces 
that determine behavior. Examples include conflicts among the id, ego, and superego, fixations during psychosexual development stages, and defense mechanisms used by the unconscious mind to shield the conscious mind from anxiety. Psychodynamics. The free will perspective has face validity. People have the conscious experience of agency, feeling like they have the ability to choose their actions. However, determinists would argue this feeling is an illusion. By assuming the scientific principle of cause and effect applies to human behavior, psychologists have successfully predicted and influenced behavior, such as the development of drug treatments. Implications of accepting a fully deterministic view include potential access to education and unemployment. If violent offending can be predicted, this may lead to interventions before a crime is committed. Arguing that behavior is due to a single determining factor is likely an oversimplification. It's more accurate to consider behavior as coming from the interplay of multiple factors. Holism. EEG research by LeBert, 1983, showed a readiness potential that appeared to make a decision less than a second before awareness of a conscious decision, suggesting that the conscious choices we experience are an illusion. The nature-nurture debate. The nature-nurture debate is an argument about the extent to which behaviors are due to the influence of nature, biology, genetics, hereditary, or nurture, experiences, learning, environment. Nature. Philosophical nativists such as Descartes assume biological hereditary, genes, is more important in determining behaviour. That much of knowledge is present from birth, innate. Nurture. Philosophical empiricists such as Locke assume learning, environment, is more important in determining behaviour, as knowledge comes from an interaction with the world. The mind starts as a blank slate or tabula rasa. The majority of psychologists take a complex view on the origins of behaviour, assuming a relative importance of each factor and an interaction between nature and nurture. Psychological theories closer to the nature perspective include the genetic explanation for OCD, the Moa gene theory of aggression, the genetic basis of schizophrenia, Balby's monotrophic theory, and evolutionary theories. Psychological theories closer to the nurture perspective include the cupboard love theory of attachment, Ainsworth's attachment styles, behaviorist theories on phobias, social learning theory, and cognitive theories. Interactionalism goes beyond assessing the relative importance of genetic, nature, and environmental nurture factors in shaping behavior. It suggests that genes and the environment actively interact and influence each other. The diaphesis stress model. Individuals may inherit a genetic, nature, predisposition for a mental health condition, diaphesis. The expression of disorder doesn't happen unless it's triggered by an environmental, nurture, stressor. Freud argued that children experience biologically driven, innate, psychosexual developmental stages as they age. Freud emphasized the interaction of these innate stages with the child's unique life experiences during each stage. For OCD and schizophrenia, concordance rates are higher in monozygotic twins than in dizygotic twins, suggesting genetics. However, the absence of 100% concordance implies that genetic and environmental factors play a role. Taking a dichotomous view of behavior can benefit treatment development. For instance, assuming OCD is entirely due to innate Nature genetic factors affecting serotonin transport led to the creation of SSRIs as a treatment. Accepting behaviors primarily influenced by nature or nurture has significant implications, such as reduced sentences for criminals with certain genetic markers under the argument that they're not fully responsible. Nature and nurture interact through epigenetic modification. DNA has chemical marks that influence how the DNA is expressed, and environmental experiences can alter the epigenome, especially in children. Holism and reductionism. Reductionism is studying complex phenomena by breaking them down into their simplest components and testing the individual elements empirically. This is based on the scientific principle of parsimony, the argument that the best explanation is the simplest one that fits the evidence. Biological reductionism, biological psychology, reduces complex human behavior to basic biological elements, such as the presence or absence of neurotransmitter-related genes. Environmental Stimulus Response Reductionism Behaviorism explains behavior through simple stimulus response mechanisms. For example, they argue that adult behavior is a result of reinforcement in childhood. Holism argues a truly valid explanation of human behavior needs to include the whole person, including fundamental biological and environmental factors, but also complex socio-cultural experiences and how each of these components interact with each other. Levels of Explanation Explanations vary from those at a lower or fundamental level, focusing on basic components or units, to those at a higher, more holistic, multivariable level. Biological reductionism is considered the most basic level of reductionism. Then psychological explanations at a mid-level, 
including environmental stimulus response reductionism, sociological explanations are at a high level, and holism is the highest level of explanation. Reductionism is a scientific approach as it enables objective testing of variables in controlled experiments, helping to establish causation. The holistic approach is unscientific as it can't isolate individual variables from empirical testing. Practically, reductionism supports the development of empirical testing of treatments like drug therapies. Holism has resulted in client-centered therapy, an individualized therapeutic method that addresses multiple aspects of an individual's life. Reductionism is overly simplistic, overlooking the complex interactions between multiple behavioral causes. Whereas the holistic approach might overlook the significance of individual elements by focusing too broadly on the whole. Reductionism can't account for complex aspects of human experience. Understanding the activity of each neuron can't explain consciousness. It's likely an emergent property, not reducible to any one factor. Considering the trade-offs between reductionism and holism should help researchers find a balance between reductive, objective and empirical methods and also attempt to gather meaningful information. Ideographic and nomothetic. Hey there, as you're still watching, I'm guessing you'll find this video useful. As I release content right up to the exams, don't forget to subscribe so you know when new videos are uploaded. Nopathetic research uses a large and representative sample of participants, and findings generate new laws of behaviour or support existing theories. Inferences are made about the broader population based on the behaviour of the sample. This process of generalisation allows researchers to make predictions. Experimental techniques include highly controlled experiments and structured observations. Quantitative, numerical data is collected. Scientific, generalizations are made from the data to create universal laws of human behavior. Data tends to have high reliability, arguably at the expense of validity. Nomothetic approaches include behaviorism, social learning theory, and biological and cognitive psychology. Ideographic research studies individuals' subjective experiences, behaviors, and personalities. There's also an attempt to understand the cultural, social, and environmental context that influences an individual. As each individual is assumed to be unique, there is usually no attempt to generalize to find general laws. Non-experimental techniques, including in-depth case studies, content analysis, and unstructured interviews. Qualitative words, data is collected, rich in detail. Unscientific, ideographic data is unreliable as two case studies will always differ. However, data is arguably more valid, truthful, in its description of behaviour. Ideographic approaches include humanistic psychology and arguably psychodynamics. The nomothetic approach. Data is easier to replicate, gather precisely and analyse using statistics, enabling generalisation of findings and prediction of future behaviour. Subjective bias is reduced through standardised methods and objective measurements. However, general trends may not accurately represent every individual in a group. Fixed criteria used as measurements do not give a complete picture of the individual. The ideographic approach. The rich and detailed information collected is a more valid perspective on human behaviour. While unusual cases are not generalizable, they can generate new interesting areas of research or overturn incorrect theories. However, due to the depth and detail, ideographic research can be a time-consuming process. The intensive data collection techniques can result in the researcher losing objectivity. Taking an integrative approach by using both methods allows researchers to combine the strengths of each, providing a more holistic understanding of behaviour. Ethical implications of research studies and theory. Implications of research. The consequences of constructing theories and conducting research for the participants and the groups they represent. These groups could be small communities or entire social groups. Possible implications. Participants suffering due to a lack of protection from harm. The public forming stereotypes groups studied suffering discrimination, and governments using psychological findings to develop harmful policies. Socially sensitive research, Seabar and Stanley's definition, studies in which there are potential consequences or implications either directly for the participants in the research or for the class of individuals represented by the research. Dealing with socially sensitive research. Reflexivity. Researchers should carefully consider their own personal biases, beliefs, and the influential position they hold, and the responsibility they have to be objective and conduct research ethically. Care informing research questions is important so the group study does not misrepresented, stereotyped. Ethics committees decide if the study should go ahead and use a cost-benefit analysis, considering the potential harms and benefits the research may have on the participants and wider society. Researchers need to present their findings in a value-free way and make clear the limitations of their methods. 
Peer review has a role in ensuring potentially harmful or misleading research is not published. The true implications, the costs and benefits of research are not known until after the research has been conducted, and may only be clear many years after publication. Studies may have a high short-term cost, but unknown long-term benefits. Controversy about conducting research in socially centred fields, such as sexuality and gender, may put researchers off working in these fields. This is problematic as minority communities may end up being understudied by psychologists. Examples of socially centred research in psychology Bowlby's theories of monotrophy and maternal deprivation are a gender double standard. Placing pressure on the mother to sacrifice career goals to develop a strong attachment to their babies while minimising the role of the father. Defining abnormality, statistical infrequency. An IQ below 70 is part of the diagnostic criteria for intellectual disability disorder. People just beyond the cutoff point set by psychologists may not receive the medical support they need. Genetic basis of aggression. Arguing that criminal behaviour is inherited leads to the implication that the criminals are not entirely responsible for their actions. This idea could negatively affect the lives of victims of crime who seek justice. Milgram Savigian's research suggested that the perspective Germans must have been exceptionally obedient to go along with the horrors of the Holocaust was a stereotype. Most of us are capable of extreme obedience in the right situation. Don't forget you can now test yourself on the Issues and Debates unit with the Psyboost app. If you want to try out the app, all the topics in paper one are free, and you can get it on iOS or Android. If you want to see model answers to Issues and Debates questions, or access my other resources, there's also Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, I do want to thank all of my patrons for their support. With the help of all of these students and teachers, I'm able to teach part-time so I can work on the main mission of Psychbeast, the development of a fruit to watch and, hopefully high quality, a level psychology course. So thanks to them, good luck with your revision, and I'll see you in the next Psychbeast video.